Scott, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Of course, of course. I'd like to start <laughs> off with, uh, you know, talking about the situation in Gaza, and then maybe in a few moments we can move on to Russia. As for Gaza, it seems to me as though this Israeli operation in Rafa has shown the true failures of the Israeli military. They're now having to divert troops back to central and northern Gaza after claiming that they had wiped out the Palestinian resistance in those regions already. What do you make of the state of the Israeli operation in Gaza from a military point of view rather than just looking at the genocide? Well, first thing we have to understand is that uh, this is a war that Israel was totally unprepared to fight. Its military isn't designed to operate below ground. And if you're going to fight Hamas in Gaza, you have to go below ground. This is a conventional military in every uh, sense of the word. Um, <clears throat> it's also a military that wasn't prepared to go into Gaza. You know, in the two years leading up to October 7th, uh, the Israeli army carried out massive military exercises together with the United States that were designed to stress test the IDF. Uh, the, the, the working assumption of the exercise was, what happened if everybody attacks us at once? Can the Israeli Defense Force defend against an attack from everybody? And um, the short answer was no, they can't. But what's interesting is when the Israelis built the scenario, um, when it came to Gaza, when it came to the Palestinians, the worst they could come up with was a repeat of the Intifada. They never once in a thousand years thought that Hamas would come out of Gaza and attack Israel the way they did on October 7th. And why is this important? You know, militaries plan for what they they believe to be the, the possible. They use their imagination to say what could be. And that's how you create your force structure. That's how you create your equipment. That's how you train based upon what you think the next war is going to look like. Israel never planned for any aspect of this Gaza operation. Their military was not prepared for this whatsoever. And this is the genius of what Hamas did, because by attacking Israel on October 7th, and luring Israel into Gaza, the Hamas organization made sure that the Israelis were always off balance. Israel didn't have a plan for Gaza, but because of the political pressure put on the Israeli government to respond to October 7th, they went forward precipitously, um, ill-prepared, no notion of what they really wanted to do, fighting an above-the-ground war when their enemy was below ground. Israel has never defeated Hamas. Israel has temporarily occupied territory above ground, but Hamas has always existed below ground, and Hamas is killing the Israelis a death by a thousand cuts. Tanks here, tanks there, men here, men there. Israel hasn't won. Israel has withdrawn, claiming victory, only to find that Hamas reemerges from the anthill that is Gaza. Now they have to send troops back in, but this time, that the rubble, has, that the, the infrastructure has been collapsed into rubble. It's impossible terrain for the Israelis to operate on above ground. So now Israel is being defeated both above ground and below ground. The Israeli Defense Force cannot prevail in this kind of battle. You can drop as many bombs as you want. You're not going to defeat Hamas. You can send the troops on the ground to try and root them out. You're not going to defeat Hamas. Hamas has planned for this war and prepared for this war, and Israel hasn't. And that's the that's the key aspect of this. Hamas is winning this battle in every way, shape, and form. Well, I think it's becoming increasingly clear to U.S. officials that that is the case. Uh, uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said as much maybe about a month and a half ago. And then just this week, we saw the Secretary of State, and I believe the Deputy Secretary of State from the U.S. come out and say that Israel cannot achieve total victory inside of Gaza. Now, one, one idea that the New York Times and many in the mainstream media seem to be running with now, recognizing that Israel, frankly, cannot win and achieve their goals, is that if simply Israel finds and 
takes out Sinwar, that will be a victory for Israel. Do you think that there are any possibilities that Israel can locate and take out Mr. Sinwar? Sure. I mean, uh, he's a target. And uh, if you put enough resources um, on a, a given target, there's a chance that you're going to locate that target. And then once Israel locates the target, uh, Israel should have the capacity to eliminate the target. Um, the fact that Sinwar has survived this long, though, shows that uh, Hamas understands the importance of keeping this man alive. Israel has no clue where this man is. Um, that doesn't mean that tomorrow they couldn't get lucky. That doesn't mean that in a week they couldn't get lucky. But here's the problem. <laughs> if you're focused on Sinwar, you're focused on the wrong thing. Uh, Hamas is an organization that goes beyond one person. Um, Israel didn't say, I mean, that's like the United States saying, if we kill bin Laden, we've defeated Al-Qaeda. No, not at all. We killed a 57-year-old diabetic uh, in, in, a, in a you know building in, uh, in, in Abbottabad, Pakistan. Uh, Al-Qaeda is a global phenomenon now. Uh, it's larger than one individual. Hamas is so much more than one man. I mean, I'm not trying to denigrate Mr. Sinwar. Obviously, he's a leader of great capacity. But... Um, an organization like Hamas doesn't, you know, isn't based on a cult of personality. It's based upon a core, uh, you know, uh, core beliefs uh, that are, you know, built around the idea of resisting Israel. Uh, the Hamas fighters today fight not because of Sinwar. They fight because they believe in their cause. And if Sinwar is killed, Hamas will exist. Hamas will continue both militarily and politically. And remember, Israel has defined victory in this conflict as the military destruction of Hamas. They're not even close to achieving that. And the political uh, dismemberment of Hamas. Hamas is stronger today politically than they have ever been. Israel is losing across the board. They've lost politically. They've lost militarily. They're losing economically. Getting rid of Sinwar uh, doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, it shows how impotent Israel truly is.